Hey everybody, it's Everett back with you from Hood Time Welding. Today we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be starting a little series that I thought up. And what it is, is it's just going to be some basic welding. Um, we're going to go through, the first one today is going to be oxyacetylene welding. Uh, we'll go over MIG, uh, stick, and TIG. Talk about each one a little bit. There's other channels where you can get a lot more information on it. This is just going to be a basic overview, sort of show you how it's done. Um, and just sort of give you a little bit of a feel, a little bit of knowledge for it, so you can decide which one's going to be the best for you and what your application is going to be. So today, like I said, we're going to start out with our basic oxyacetylene welding. Um, I started out, uh, I went to school for it like 30 years ago, just about 30 years ago. And the very first welding we ever started on was oxyacetylene. Um, I don't think anybody really does it too much anymore, but... If you're just trying to do some little home projects and you don't buy, want to buy a welder and you already got a set of torches, um, all you got to do is get a tip. Um, you can see it just, it almost looks like a brazing tip, but it's not. It's an actual tip for welding. Um, and your uh, local suppliers should have a tip. You might have had one that came with your torches when you got your cutting torches. But um, yeah, this is a size zero tip. Um, I don't remember the different sizes, but this one will do smaller stuff. Um, and when I say welding on stuff, I mean you're going to want to weld on smaller stuff. Uh, 20 gauge, 18, which is what I got for showing you it. Um, maybe all the way up to 14 gauge, but you'll have to get a bigger tip like than zero. And um, so one of the things I've done is I uh, made a gas tank out of using oxyacetylene welding because I call it the poor man's TIG. It's, um, you can see where you've got holes pretty much. You can go back over your weld like you can with TIG. The biggest problem with it is you're inputting so much heat, you will get some distortion in plate. So that's one of the downfalls of it. That's why TIG's a better process is because you, there's, it's such a fine area that you're heating up where this is going to heat up a much larger area. And you'll see once we get going what I mean by that. But again, it has its uses. Uh, you can also use it the same tip style for brazing. Uh, brazing is real good if you have cast or stuff like that. I don't have any brazing rods, so we're not going to be doing any brazing today. But just know that it's a process you can look into if you need to do some cast or something like that. You had something cast for, that broke. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, the setup, sorry, like I said, you just put your tip on, you can control your oxygen, your acetylene from down here, where when you have the cutting head on, you have this oxygen all the way up and control it up here. For this one, like I said, you have your acetylene, you have your oxygen down here. For the tanks themselves, um, acetylene, you're going to set between six and eight. Uh, if you get a bigger tip, you can bump that up a little bit. And then the oxygen, you only have to set it at about 20. And you're not even going to be using all that pressure. It's going to, you're going to see. So let's go ahead and get you switched over to a bird's eye view and do a little welding for you. So I'm not sure which video is going to make it in the final cut, but I did a video of um, doing the oxyacetylene welding with using a filter, a number five shade. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see that. So now I'm going to try one without the shade. So we'll go over everything. Just so Depending on which one makes the final cut, you'll hear everything I have to say. So oxyacetylene welding, the first thing is getting your torch lit. So you light your torch just like you regularly would, but just with the acetylene. And you want to get it so there's a slight feather at the end. Then you start adding your oxygen. So right there you can see you've got your big outer, you have an inner, and then you have your real small one. You want to get that so the the smaller inner so those two match now that might be a little bit hot so i'm going to take a little fuel out there we go so it looks like a nice little cone i hold my torch when i'm doing this like a pencil so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to try to concentrate our heat mostly on that bottom plate because that top edge is going to want to tend to melt away on us so we're going to heat up our tap, and once you start seeing stuff liquidified, you know you've got it. 
So then you can start adding in rod. Eh, the only problem is rod gets stuck sometimes. And you're going to sort of use your rod to help. Oh, I got a little crap in my forks. Anyways, you're going to sort of use your rod to help that upper plate because that's going to take some of that heat away. And you're just going to slowly feed it in. I always said oxyacetylene is like the poor man's TIG. And it's a lot cheaper than TIG because you have you need a lot less equipment. Now I'm just sort of slowly working that puddle. Adding rod as I say I need it. Trying not to burn that top edge away so we have a nice clean joint. And the nice thing about this is you can really, it's a little bit slower, so it's actually really good for practicing your TIG. Because you got to watch the whole puddle. And you can see, I can see I have a little hole right there. I'm going to add a little bit of rod. Now these plates, I think, have a little bit of crap in them, so they're sparking on me some. But it's not a big deal. I should have probably done a little bit better job cleaning. And it's just a slow process of working that puddle over and your rod as you go. Yeah, like I said, I'm doing two of these, so we'll see which one makes the final cut. The one with the where I have you guys on with a shade on. Or this one, depending on which one you can see better. We're almost to the end here. You can see she's starting to really heat up. So now if I saw a bad spot, I could actually go back over where I see that bad spot and get my puddle back. It's going to take a minute. So I got my puddle back. And then just start working that puddle again. So that's why I always say it's sort of like TIG is... Especially like when I was doing that gas tank, if I had any bad spots, I could always go right back over them without having to grind anything. So there's the final. We'll go ahead and uh, clean it up a little bit with a wire brush. Sorry, I don't know. So there's that one. Uh, if I do use the one with the shade, I'm actually going to be showing you the other one, the other one that I did. But you can see this is a pretty decent bead. I'm getting better as I practice more. So let's see which one turns out better. All right, so we've got this all welded up. We're going to go ahead and uh, use some pliers because it's hot. You can see that the plate did bow just a little bit. So now we're just going to take our wire brush. Clean the edges so you can see we have complete fusion top and bottom all the way. And like I said, I can or I need to work on it so I can um, lay better beads. I think I have a practice one here. There you go. You can see that you can get really nice beads on it. And with just a slight bit of cleaning, they can actually look really nice. So that's just something I wanted to show you. Um, sorry. So anyways, just want to show you there is the possibility to do more than just cut stuff with your torches and that. And that 
It's a process that's not widely known, but it can still be used. Um, it's actually sort of cool. Uh, sorry, I was just going to show you the back side. It did have just a little bit of bleed through, but it didn't. Otherwise, it didn't really penetrate on back. So, the next one we'll be doing, we'll talk about MIG welding. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of um, information on oxyacetylene welding. And we'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.